Hi, I'm Nate with Key Ranger Salt Lake, and today I want to show you a very simple strategy to dramatically increase the return on your investment with your single family rental home. Uh, this is not for duplexes or fourplexes, but for your single family rental. It's a rent to own or a lease option. We like to call it a rent to own because that's what most people are familiar with. And uh, what a rent to own is, is basically a tenant who is interested in your home. They want to rent it, but they want to have the, the prospect of buying the home at a later date. And so what we do is we collect money from them up front where they're buying this option to buy the home at a later date. Now, this strategy is not for investors or landlords that, end, that want to end up moving back into the home because there is the prospect of them, of the tenant buying the house. So we gotta make that clarification that this is meant for investors and landlords that really want to increase the return on their investment in the long, short term and the long term. And I say long term because even though the tenant has an option to buy, we know that the vast majority will never end up buying the house. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But today I wanna to go through some of the benefits and also the financial breakdowns of what a rent to own or a lease option is, okay? So like I mentioned, the tenant puts upfront money down, usually five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for the prospect of buying the house at a later date. That's cash, it's non-refundable, and it's uh, money that you can keep. Longer leases, typically we start out at a two-year lease, sometimes three, sometimes longer. We like to do two to three year leases on the front end and extend if we have to later on. Traditional rental, a lot of tenants are looking for one year, even less. Higher rent. So just because you have the option and you're advertising a rent to own doesn't mean you'll get higher rent. But what it means is if we have a thousand dollar rental, oftentimes we'll be able to get 1200 because we're using a strategy we called rent credits where if the tenant's paying $1,200, we're gonna give them $300 a month that will go towards the purchase of the house. You might say, well, what, that, what does that do with the purchase price? It's gonna be very low. Well, I'll tell you what we do with that. No maintenance, okay? We're passing that on to the tenant because they are assuming ownership. They're assuming their place in the home and they have the prospect of owning that. So we pass the maintenance obligations on to them. Now they could push on some items that under the Fit Premises Act, the landlord has to repair to make it habitable. But most of the time they just end up fixing those as well as we set this expectation up with the lease. So that reduces the headache, reduces the cost dramatically. And you might think, well, what about deferred maintenance? What if they don't fix things? Well, we can still inspect the home. So we're still checking on it to see if things are getting done, and if they're not, we can have them done and bill it to the tenant. Set purchase price. So up front, we look at what the market value is of the house, and then we project with appreciation, and then we also add in the upfront down payment, the rent credits, possibly even some, com some commission. We just have to make sure it can appraise at that value after we've reduced all these other things. And so you can come up and come out of the, the sale quite a bit ahead uh, by structuring it this way. So if we have a normal uh, sale price of 200, you'd probably be able to sell it for, you know, that price plus appreciation and the rent credits and down payment. Most don't buy. So even though we're talking about the sale, we structure that up front, uh, st statistically, locally as well as nationwide, it's about 85 to 90 percent of lease options, rent to owns, don't actually end up buying. Although we've tried to help them, we've tried to connect them with our lender, we've tried to work with them, they just, they have those same habits that put them in a place where they couldn't buy today that they can't buy at a later date as well. And uh, again, whatever down payment that they had, whatever rent credits we gave them is non-refundable. So we just put it back on the market and find another tenant with an option uh, we put out for rent to own. It's in high demand, point number seven, very high demand. In fact, you put a little sign out 
rent to own and, and the phone rings off the hook. In fact, we have more tenants calling us asking for rent to owns than we have inventory to provide for them. So in fact, you'll rent your house out faster using this method than a traditional rental because it's that popular. Um, and number eight, better tenants, okay? We know that a rental is only as successful as the tenant that we place. So this, stra this strategy is, is great for that because the tenants have skin in the game. They've put money down, they're paying a higher rent, they're assuming ownership, and so we're putting a tenant in there that doesn't want to lose out on the payment that they put down. What do I mean by that? So if they're laid over a certain amount of times, they lose the option. If they have lease violations, they can lose the option. And so the, the expectation is much higher for these sort of tenants. Okay, so let's look at this from a financial standpoint. Traditional rental compared to a rent to own. Now, first of all, we're gonna have a security deposit in both cases. Some investors don't require a deposit. We like to still, but that is the tenant's money, okay? So this is not income for the landlord, for the investor. So if we do a traditional rental, we get nothing out of the deposit. Up front, with the down payment, we get nothing with a traditional rental. We could get $5,000, we get seven, eight, ten thousand $10,000, or sometimes less as well. The rent, $1,000, I'm just gonna use that as a round, even an easy number to use. With a rent to own, we oftentimes can get, say, 1,200. So it increases your cash flow there. With our expenses, we have taxes, and that's gonna be the same in both. Insurance, management fee, we'll just use around 10%, $100 here, 120 there. Maintenance, budget of $50, which is pretty typical on a monthly basis to spend about $50 or over the life of, uh, or the course of a year. In this case, we're not spending anything, we're passing it on to the tenant. So a monthly breakdown of a net, now this is assuming the property's paid off, there's not a mortgage, um, or we're using this payment to go towards a mortgage, so we're not taking that into consideration. But the monthly net, 700 here, 930 over here. When you're looking at a cash flow basis, that's pretty significant, okay? Year one, $8,400, $16,160 because of that down payment that we got. After year two, now $8,400, possibly if they renew the lease, there may be a renewal fee as well with the manager. Um, so it's probably a little less if, they, if it went vacant for a month after year one, um, we're getting less there, but we'll just give it the benefit of the doubt and say 8,400. 11,160 with the rent to own on the second year. So not only are we getting a lot on the front end on a monthly basis and yearly basis, we're getting a significant amount as well. Now in the event that this tenant after year two, we'll look at this point here of a, a longer lease, after year two if they can't buy, either they'll move out or we can renew the lease and get another renewal deposit down. So they could put another two or $3,000 down that you would not have gotten with a traditional rental. So every way about it, you're making more money. When it sells, or if it sells, I should say, with this tenant, uh, commissions are a lot lower than with selling on the open market. And everywhere, every way about it, it just makes sense. And so I hope that you, this opens your mind a little bit and helps you understand uh, some of the benefits of a rent to own as we talk to you more about it and your property manager and our team uh, is encouraging you to do rent to owns. I hope you understand this is, that this is why. It's for your benefit as well as our benefit. And uh, we hope that, uh, I hope that this has been informative. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you.